This Thursday night, we have an AFC East matchup. We have Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills coming off that week one win, facing off two against Tua Tagovailoa and the Miami Dolphins. Uh, Stan the Jet fan is here with us to give us his thoughts on these AFC East teams up next on No Buts. All righty, Stan. Uh, welcome back. You were just here uh, to talk about the Jets, and you're still here, but now we're going to talk about the, ten- uh, the, not the Tennessee Titans, the Buffalo Bills, and the Miami Dolphins, and this this crazy divisional matchup that you have you you're paying attention to obviously because you want to see both these teams how they're going to match up against your New York Jets, but um, just what what are your first thoughts on this matchup? We've already got a couple key injuries um, out there, but I want to know what you're thinking we're going to see tomorrow. I mean, you should all say there's a reason this matchup was chosen for the second uh, Thursday night football of the season, right? I mean, it, it's pretty major. It's pretty big. And uh, this is probably going to be a matchup between two teams that are going to be vying for the first spot in their division, uh, you know, come week 15 onwards, right? So to uh, look at those uh, teams and what they did last week, I think you see a very clear picture for what this upcoming game is going to look like, right? Both teams struggled from the get-go. They were actually both losing, I think, both uh, 17 to 7 or whatever. They had the same score um, after that first half, um, and both of them were able to pick it up towards the end. But I think the reasons why both those teams were able to pick it up are very different. I think for the Dolphins, it was uh, because of really good play calling. They were able to work better both on offense and defense. They were able to move the ball more efficiently and get some points on the board uh, to have their very narrow victory. I think it was a three-point victory over the Jaguars. Um, the Bills, on the other hand, played a much worse team, in my opinion, with the Cardinals, uh, though a very explosive and a young team with the Cardinals. I and mean, I think we saw a bit of both of that mixed into the game. Uh, but the Bills, to me, they struggled uh, with play calling very early on. And even in the end of the game, I think they did struggle with play calling. It was Josh Allen, I think, who single-handedly was able to pull their team out of the deficit, get some points on the board. Um, I, I think, you know, the Dolphins, I saw a situation where the play calling, the coaching, everything like that was able to improve the adjustments into the second half. For the Bills, I saw a team that had the second best, or maybe uh, in terms of performance, probably the first best quarterback right now um, in the NFL in terms of what he was able to do and how he's able to carry that team on his back and get the victory. Yeah, so you mentioned the Bills. I was shocked, honestly, that the Cardinals were leading them. I I knew the Bills had lost a ton of players. They lost Stephon Diggs. They lost Gabe Davis. Uh, Jordan Poyer is now on the Dolphins. So there's. I, I thought there would be some growing pains this season, but I was like, losing to the Arizona Cardinals, though. And Marvin Harrison Jr. didn't even have a big game. So it was it was kind of, kind of a shock. They did end up coming back to win. But uh, Kyler Murray just like – and Dan Orlovsky had a great breakdown of this, by the way. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you check, the, check it out. But there's this freeze frame going around. I don't know if you've seen it, where Marvin Harrison Jr. looks wide open. And people were just like, why did Kyler Murray not throw? And it was just, if you watch Kyler Murray's progressions and the way he's reading the defenses, um, it makes sense why he didn't see Marvin Harrison Jr. It's not that he didn't make the throw. It's just the timing didn't work out. Um, But the Buffalo Bills were quite possibly that timing working out away from losing to the Arizona Cardinals. And now uh, Josh Allen supposedly has a hand injury. Um, He's expected to play through it. He's expected to be fine. But Taron Johnson, who is a, a nickel corner, not a huge name, but definitely a big part of that Bills defense, he's out. And then you have uh, Taylor Rapp, who's a safety, and he's getting his start, his second start. He's been behind Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde in the past. Neither of those guys are on the team anymore. So you got Taylor Rapp back there at safety. Ed Oliver's still on that defensive line. So you've got some guys on defense, but losing Taron Johnson, that's going to be a big, that's going to be a big hit to that Buffalo Bills uh, defense, in my opinion. 
However, if you flip it over to the Miami Dolphins, they've lost Raheem Mostert, and they may lose Devon Achan. He was shown uh, walking through practices. He was shown uh, kind of doing some stuff, but he's still questionable. So, and then also, we, we let's not forget, the Miami Dolphins have new coordinators. They have a new defensive coordinator, and uh, I believe they also have a new offensive coordinator, but that defensive coordinator is going to be a much bigger deal, in my opinion, because Mike McDaniels is an offensive guru. But in, in your mind, which of those injuries is going to have the bigger impact um, on this Thursday night football game? Um, you know, I would I would say the the Johnson injury with the Bills, because uh, if you if you look at the Bills and their secondary, they were already stretched. And as you mentioned, they lost so much, so many key characters uh, in that offseason. And Paul, you're going to the Dolphins too. Um, but I think that Bills secondary was already kind of low, and losing a nickel cor- corner, Johnson's probably a top five nickel corner. De- I'm sorry, definitely a top five nickel corner. Probably in that conversation for top two, um, uh, in the league, right? And losing a player like that who makes that sort of impact, especially against uh, you know a team that's going to run a lot of plays with guys in the slot, run a lot of plays uh, with halfbacks, running through that middle area of the field, losing a nickel corner uh, who is one of the best uh, on your defense, uh, one of the best players on your defense overall, that makes a big impact there. I think also it's going to put a lot more stress uh, on the linebackers from the Bills to play in that middle area to keep all of that locked down, uh, which is going to leave a lot of receivers on the outside uh, able to get a lot deeper in the field. So I think you're going to see a lot of struggles in zone defense for the Bills, and um, I'm not too sure how they're going to deal with that. I am interested to see uh how the bills kind of react to Tyreek Hill now that they have cuz before you could kind of put Micah Hyde over the top um in a corner and hope to stop him but now like Taylor Rapp isn't prime Micah Hyde and he isn't prime Jordan Poyer and even they struggled to stop Tyreek Hill I mean most corners and safeties do in the NFL because he's a he's the cheetah. I I don't know how. I think the one thing that may save the Buffalo Bills defense is if Devon Achan is out and they can say, okay, we know the Buffalo or we know the Miami Dolphins are going to have to pass more now because their running backs are out. They can't run the ball. Um and that may help them go more man, but I don't know that that'll help that much with, uh, J- again, you got Jalen Waddle over there too. Right. So my, my, this could be an interesting game and I think it's a home game for Miami. Do I have that right? Yes. So it's going to be hot. And that humidity I think is going to bother uh, the Buffalo bills a little bit more. Flipping well, over it- what, you know, so you're, so I was gonna people. say it, it will be hot, but it's gonna be at nighttime. So I don't think the effect of the heat's gonna hurt that much. I think it starts eight fifteen Eastern. So by then, uh, it's not really gonna make too much of a difference. I think one thing uh, the Bills should keep in mind going into this game and Bills fans watching um, is that the Dolphins have struggled uh, a little bit recently um, with with keeping their their composure together towards the end of games, right? Um, and while you saw the opposite of that the last game, you look at the end of last season. They were unable to keep their playbook uh, fresh, to keep their plays fresh towards the third and fourth quarters of the game. And for the Bills, if you look at their strength through last season, if you look at Josh Allen, where he's able to pick it up, he's very clutch. That fourth quarter, that third quarter, he's going to be able to cook that defense. That's very true. I looked up the weather forecast for Miami tomorrow. It is 10% chance of rain, 83 degrees at 9 p.m., with 80% humidity. It's going to be warm still. I know it's at night, but that's still going to be warm down there in Miami. Um, I, I don't know that I'm a fan of that if I'm Ed Oliver on that defensive line. But we'll see what happens. I think you bring up a great point about Josh Allen, though. And um, he, Keon Coleman, he had a not a amazing debut, but he had, he had some good yardage um, coming out into the NFL. I think he had like 52 yards or something like that. And so 
that opens up that offense a little bit for Josh Allen. You got James Cook, who, again, didn't have a great game, but he had 19 carries for 71 yards. Um, if, if they can keep that – if they can get that run game going early, that will be another thing that helps them out as well because Josh Allen is also a mobile threat. So then you got two mobile threats in James Cook and Josh Allen. you got Dalton Kincaid, Keon Coleman. There's your uh, two – passing threats. So I think the Buffalo Bills can still win this. The Buffalo Bills are a lesser team than last year, but I, I do think it's possible that they win this. And I, they've won like the fur the last uh four of the five matchups or something like that. Is that right? Does that sound right? Uh I, I'm actually not too sure. I know they've won more than they've lost, but I'm sure you're right on that. Okay. I'm not sure that I'm right on that, but I'm glad you're sure that I'm right. <laughs> But, yeah, I, I think the Bills can still win this. They're going to be at a disadvantage, at least as it stands right now, with injuries. But um, they can come out and win this. I, I'm also concerned for the Dolphins with Tua. Tua is a great quarterback. This isn't a knock on Tua. But he threw for 337 yards against the Jaguars and had one touchdown to show for it. That's, that's crazy to me. I mean, what I'll say is I'm not I'm not too concerned with that with Tua. What I'm more concerned with Tua is he seems to get in his head a lot more than basically any other quarterback in the NFL. So if you get Tua in a, in a tough spot once or twice, uh, that defense can pressure him a little little bit over where he feels comfortable. Um, you, you win the game like that. I, I think Josh Allen is someone who I view more as bouncing back from that sort of pressure from from going down. Tua tends to struggle with that. So I, I think I think for both defenses, you're going to be a lot weaker. Both offenses, uh, I think the Dolphins as well, they are a lot weaker. Those injuries, even Jalen Waddle, he got injured last game. So even if, even if he's back full strength, um, who knows what that looks like, right, after not being able to play that much in that first game. So I, I think I think it's going to be a rough game. It's probably going to be a lower scoring game. Um, but I think Josh Allen and the Bills have every advantage uh, – or, sorry, every – every chance to get the advantage in this game. Yeah, I, I guess where I was going with that was just like, I think, and I, I, full full disclosure, I have not watched the Dolphins game in a in-depth capacity. But to me, that when I see that sort of stat line, it usually means there's a bad red zone offense somewhere. When you have 330 yards, that means you're getting down the field, but something's stopping you from putting points on the board. And – I don't know what that is. I do agree with you. Uh, I, I would much rather have Josh Allen have to put the game on his back than have to have to put the game on his back. Uh, we've seen Josh Allen do it way more times. We've seen him do it successfully. Um, but we've also seen Josh Allen lose a lot of games too, trying to, you know, fire left and right. We saw that, that Jets game we just talked about last year. He lost that game for them. I, when Aaron Rodgers went down and he threw what three interceptions was it? So Josh Allen can definitely lose this game for him as much as he can win it. True, true. So uh, I am going to let's go. Let's go ahead and make our picks here. And Piper's picks will be out tomorrow. She is asleep right now, so she can't make her pick. But I will post uh, for all the Piper fans out there who her Thursday night football pick is, but mine for this game is I'm going to go ahead and go with the trends. I'm going to go with the Buffalo bills, despite the uh, injuries on defense and the uh, replacement players on defense. I think Josh Allen is going to put the game on his back and get out there and win it. Keon Coleman may even get his first NFL touchdown. What do you think, Stan? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and put the Bills as well. Um, I'm pr- very confident in them, uh, not just in this game, but through the season. I don't think the Dolphins are the threat. Um, I, I, think, I think they've kind of punched themselves in the gut too many times. Um, I think the Bills are the team that I can see making that Super Bowl push out of those two. And I think uh, this game here, I think uh, the coaching from the Bills, who have been pretty good, um, I, I like I like the Dolphins, of course. They're coaching as much as any other guy, but on defense, the Bills I think have the better coaching. I think that's gonna that's gonna push them through. All righty, 
Well, there you have our picks. Let me know what you think is going to happen down in the comments. Uh, Stan will be stopping by potentially next week to talk about the New York Jets game. Uh, who, who do you guys play next week, Stan? We play the Titans, so it should, it should okay. be a, an easier game in between what's going to be a very tough – well, what we saw is a very tough opening week and a very tough third week coming up. Okay, so – there we go. Might have Stan back next week to talk about the Tennessee Titans and uh, the New York Jets. See if they can defeat that male loving man down there in Nashville. But until next time, we would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel, like, comment, and go do something nice for someone.